We're going over a forearm workout today to increase our strength and to prevent injuries. Hi, I'm Dr. Joe DeMarco, chiropractor and owner of Oakland Health. You know, there's two reasons why you want to make sure that you're working your forearm muscles on a regular basis. One is injury prevention. The, probably some of the most common type of injuries that keep people out of the gym are injuries to the wrist, the forearm, and the elbow. And most of them are the, those tendonitis type of nagging injuries, you know, wrist tendonitis, medial epicondylitis, lateral epicondylitis, uh, the brachioradialis muscle gets, gets irritated and inflamed. And these are all nagging type of tendonitis injuries that keep us out of the gym that can be prevented if you keep your forearm muscles strong. The second reason you want to train your forearms is, yet you, is that you're only as strong as the amount of weight you can hold. And what do I mean by that? Well, if I'm, if I'm doing any type of an, an exercise where I have to hold on to the weight, whether I'm, I'm performing some type of rowing motion or I'm doing bicep curls, you don't want your forearm muscles to fatigue out before the muscle that you're working fatigues out. So in other words, if, if I can only uh, take uh, 70 pounds and curl it eight times because by the eighth rep I can't hold on to the bar anymore because my forearm muscles are so fatigued and yet my bicep isn't fatigued that's not good you want to make sure that your bicep is going to fatigue out before your, your forearm muscles are going to fatigue out. Same thing um, if I'm rowing, if I'm, if I'm performing a rowing motion and I'm working my back. I want to make sure that I can get the most amount of reps I can get to fatigue out my back. I don't want to stop my set because I physically can't hold on to the bar anymore while, while I'm rowing. A perfect example too is deadlifting. How many times do people miss a certain weight on a deadlift, not because their technique is off or they're not strong enough in the core or the back or the legs. It's that a lot of times they can't hold on to the bar. So it's so important to keep those forearm muscles strong so that we get the most of our workout. So we're gonna go over a, a full, complete forearm workout today. And all I'm gonna use for this video for, for equipment is I'm using an exercise band, a broomstick, a uh, spongy type of ball and an elastic band. If you don't have that stuff at home, just improvise. This is gonna be a great forearm workout. We're gonna cover all different aspects of forearm strength. So we're gonna start off with some band work. Okay, so we're starting off with just a regular exercise band with a couple handles. To perform these exercises, I'm just gonna step on the band with both feet. Try to make sure, uh, make sure your feet are even on the band. What I like to do whenever I'm doing an exercise where I'm standing on the band, um, I just make sure I'm on it evenly. So I check the pressure. I make sure it, it feels equal in, the bo in both hands, okay? First couple of exercises. We're gonna target the brachioradialis muscle, which is known a lot of times as the hammering muscle. It's the muscle we use to hammer. It's an important muscle to keep strong. It's also an important muscle to work and develop because it's a large muscle and by building it up, it increases the size of our forearms. So the first exercise we're gonna do is a reverse curl. The back of my palm is facing you and I'm gonna curl up just like that and nice and slow and controlled, I'm gonna lower it down till my elbows are straight and then I'm gonna come back up again. Just like that. So I'm gonna do 20 repetitions of this reverse curl. Of course, you can gauge, depending on how you're standing on the band, you can, uh, if you only have one band, you can gauge, you can spread your legs out wider and that'll increase the tension on the band or you can bring your legs in tighter together and that'll decrease the tension on the band. Of course, if you have a band set, there's usually multiple bands you can choose from, but try to find tension that you can get 20 nice repetitions. After I do 20 repetitions, I'm gonna change my grip a little bit. Instead of holding on to the, to the handles like this, I'm gonna actually just squeeze the handles in my hand like this, so, and I'm gonna have my thumbs so that they're pointing up towards the ceiling, and I'm gonna do another set in, in this wrist position. So just a little different activation of some of the forearm muscles by changing the position of my, my wrist. So instead of having the uh, palms facing you and the palms going up towards the ceiling, I now have the thumbs uh, going up towards the ceiling. And once again, 
I'm going to do 20 repetitions. I'm really concentrating. I want to use good form. This isn't the type of a movement where I want to be using my back or not going all the way down. Nice form, 20 good repetitions, just like that. Okay, the next uh, couple exercises, if you're not used to doing forearm work, you can just do them holding on to these bands uh, with your arms straight. If you've, if, you, if you've been doing some weightlifting or some exercising, your forearms feel good, uh, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna do the, all these exercises from my elbows being held at 90 degrees. But like I said, if you're, if you're new to this, you can just use um, the arm straight because we're doing wrist uh, motions on, on these next couple exercises and it's a little easier if your elbows are straight. I'm gonna do my elbows bent. So the first one's gonna be wrist flexion. I'm gonna keep my elbows bent at 90. This way I'm engaging, I'm doing some isometric work with some of the muscles around the, uh, around the elbow uh, and I'm gonna hold at 90 through this whole set. Um, like I said, if you do them straight, you can still do the wrist flexion with the arms straight, but we're gonna do them, I'm gonna do them with the elbows at 90. From this position, let the band handles roll all the way down to the tips of your finger as far as you can, then, then squeeze your, into a fist around the handles and then flex the uh, wrist upwards like that. So you're gonna come down, let the handles roll into the tips of your finger as far as you can, Bring them up by squeezing your, your, your fingers, work those hand muscles, and then flex the wrist up like that. So of course this has to be performed in a nice, slow, controlled movement. And try to figure out a resistance on the band so that you can get 20 repetitions of this movement. Okay, after 20 of those, we're gonna do wrist extension. So extension is this motion when I'm coming in this position. Once again, you can do it with the arms straight from down here. I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna bend to 90 degrees. I'm gonna let the wrist drop down. And then I'm gonna extend all the way up as far as I can. So nice and slow, don't let them flop down. Nice and slow, control the negative, control it going down. And then extend as far up as you can. So this isn't a huge range of motion. So that's why you wanna make sure you go in a nice, slow, controlled manner. This isn't something that you wanna just be going like this and not, not uh, knowing what you're doing. You know, let the, control the negative coming down, let the wrist come down, then bring it up and extend both wrists. You know, if there's one area of the wrist that, in the forearm muscles that don't get worked enough, it's the extensor muscles. We tend to do everything in a lot of flexion. We don't do enough extension. So 20 repetitions. Next up, we're gonna do what's called wrist abduction. Now, an anatomical position of a person is, is standing like this with the palms facing forward. So wrist abduction is when you pull the, uh, the hand away from the body, you're abducting it. So when we're doing wrist abduction on this exercise, I'm gonna grip onto the handles like this so that the thumbs are once again facing up and I'm gonna let my wrist drop down and then I'm gonna pull it into abduction this way. So it may not look like abduction because I'm not standing here going like this, but that's the motion I'm doing. So I'm gonna control it, I'm gonna let it drop down, and then I'm gonna flex it in this position. So this is wrist abduction. Nice and controlled manner. My elbows are at 90 degrees. This is a great exercise. We don't tend to work these muscles that often also. And I'm gonna do 20 nice controlled repetitions of wrist abduction. Now the last motion we're gonna do, we have to actually do it with our arms straight. There's really no way to do it with the elbows bent. But once again, anatomical position, it would be wrist adduction, which is actually pulling the wrist the fingers towards the body. Now, it's not gonna look like that because I'm gonna have my palm the opposite way, so ad adduction would be going this way now because I'm not in anatomical position. This is anatomical, the correct anatomical position if you look at an anatomy book. So adduction is this way. I'm gonna have my wrist facing this way. Grip a little bit lower on the bands to increase your tension if you need to. So I'm grabbing lower on my bands here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that uh, wrist adduction by bringing the wrists like that. So I'm gonna bring them in, and then I'm gonna just bring them out like that. So I'm thinking of taking my pinkies and bringing them out to the wall on each side of me. 
just like that. Nice and controlled, 20 repetitions of this motion. Make sure you adjust the tension. It's gonna need, you're gonna need a little different tension to get to feel it on this exercise as opposed to those other exercises because those other exercises I had my elbows bent, so now I have to tighten up the, the, the bands to do this particular motion of wrist adduction. Okay, so that takes you through the band exercises. Let's move on to using just something as simple as an elastic band. Okay, next up, we're gonna do some work with the extensor muscles of our hands. Now, the, these are uh, muscles that do not get worked enough. We do a lot of stuff in flexion. We're always gripping. We're holding a tennis racket. We're gripping a barbell. And, and the imbalance between the extensor muscles and the flexor muscles is what leads to a lot of our different injuries, such as uh, tennis elbow, golfer's elbow. There's that discrepancy. So you want to make sure you're doing muscles for the extensors. So this is an exercise you can do with no resistance whatsoever. We're just simply going from a fist to an open hand. It seems like a simple exercise, but if you stand here and you do that for about 60 seconds, you'll realize that it is very fatiguing and it's very tiring and it does an awesome job at working the extensors. So if you've never done it, do it with nothing, uh, no resistance. What I'm gonna use is just a simple elastic band I'm gonna just put the tips of my fingers in the band like this, and I'm gonna use this for my resistance, and I'm gonna just take it, and I'm gonna open up my fingers and close my fingers back and forth. So the way we're gonna do this is, like I said, 60 seconds of opening and closing, try to really extend out the fingers against the resistance of the band, and then let it come back in. So just really extend out, and then come back in. 60 seconds, then of course we're gonna switch and do the other side. If, uh, if the one single band, if you can get to 60 seconds and you're not feeling it anymore, just put a second band around. If you're not used to it, use no band. Work those muscles. It's so important, those extensive muscles of the hand. Next up, grip strength. Now, this is a type of exercise you can use. I have just a foam ball here. You can use a tennis ball. You, if you have uh, hand grips, this is a perfect time to break out the hand grips. It doesn't matter. First couple ways we're going to do this is we're gonna first do it with the ball more in my fingertips, just like that. And I'm going to just squeeze all my fingertips together and then come back out, just like that. And once again, this is a 60 second exercise I'm gonna do. I have the ball just at the tips of my fingers. I'm trying to squeeze all my tips of my fingers together. And I'm gonna do this as many times as I can get on 60 seconds before I switch and go to my other hand. Once you've done both hands, now I'm gonna bring the ball deeper into my, the palm of my hand, and I'm gonna repeat. And I'm gonna squeeze as hard as I can for 60 seconds, just like that. Now, this is a very foamy type of ball, which is great to use, but even if you had something like a tennis ball that doesn't really squeeze that much, it doesn't matter. It's just the, the act of, of, of the contracting the muscles. So use whatever you have. Hand grips is fine also, but I'm gonna, um, repeat the 60 seconds now with the ball deep into my palm of my hand and I'm going to go 60 seconds and then repeat on that side. So there's two fingertips and then deep into the hand. Next and uh, final motion we're going to do with this is I'm going to do like a pinching motion and I'm going to utilize each finger. So I'm going to start with the thumb and the index finger. I'm going to squeeze. Then I'm going to go thumb, middle finger, squeeze. Thumb, ring finger, squeeze. Thumb, pinky, squeeze. I'm going to go back the opposite way, ring finger middle finger, index finger, middle finger, ring finger, pinky, ring finger, middle finger, index finger. And I'm gonna repeat that sequence for 60 seconds and then I'm gonna switch on that side. That's, that that um, series of, uh, of exercises, if you're doing that consistently, that's gonna make a big difference on your grip strength. It's really gonna help you hold on to the bar, hold on to that tennis rack, and it's gonna make a big difference for you. Okay, so final set of exercises. I'm gonna perform with a broomstick. I taped a lacrosse ball at the end of the broomstick to add some resistance. Because of the length of this broomstick, anything you add to the end, no matter how light it might seem when you hold it in your hand, it adds quite a bit of resistance um, where when we hold this broomstick at the end, it, it adds a lot of weight. So. 
Just go on your, your strength. If you're new to this, just use the broomstick with nothing on the end. Tape a lacrosse ball, tape a softball, tape a, a small weight on the end if you want, or use a baseball bat for just a heavier object. It doesn't matter what you use, just perform the exercise to your strength and, and, and just as long as you're keeping good form. So the first exercise we're gonna do here is I'm gonna have, uh, I'm holding the end of the broomstick, I'm gonna have my arm by my side, locked at 90 degrees. This is not gonna move. The motion's gonna occur through the wrist. I'm gonna have the um, broomstick straight up and down. I'm gonna let the wrist come down and let the broomstick lower. And I'm gonna go as far as I can so I feel a stretch through here, nice and comfortable. If you're using too much weight and it actually feels like it's starting to hurt, then lower the weight. So from this position, now I'm gonna use the wrist, and I'm gonna use the wrist to bring that broomstick all the way back up. So the, these are all exercises you wanna be in complete control. You don't want this thing flinging around and injuring your wrist or injuring a tendon of your wrist. And I'm gonna do as many repetitions as I can in 60 seconds in a nice controlled manner. Once I do 60, and then of course I'll do the other hand, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold the, the um, broomstick this way. Once again, this arm is locked, it's not moving, elbows at 90, the arm's locked in. And we're gonna do some work with our supinators and pronator muscles. So I'm gonna let the, I'm gonna let the wrist turn out. I'm gonna have my uh, forearm in, go into supination. I'm gonna let it drop as far as it can down without, trying, without this moving. So get to, get, let it drop till you feel the tension, and then you're gonna pull it up, nice and slow and controlled. When you get to the top, let it go the opposite way and, and turn your, your forearm and wrist into pronation. So now the palm is facing up, I'm pronated, and now I'm gonna use the muscles of my wrist and forearm to bring the broomstick back up. So we're going into supination here. So when I'm in supination, I'm actually using my pronator muscles now to turn the stick back up. And then as I lower it slowly and my wrist and forearm go into pronation, it's my supinator muscles that are bringing the, the stick back up. And I'm gonna do as many slow controlled repetitions as I can in 60 seconds. And then of course, I'm gonna switch arms and do the opposite side for 60 seconds. Final exercise. I'm gonna grab the end of the broomstick. I got the, the, the end of it that way with the ball. I'm gonna have my arm straight this time. I'm gonna let the broomstick drop down to the ground. I'm gonna, just from the motion of my wrist, I'm gonna bring the, um, the broomstick off the ground. I'm gonna bring it up as high as I can, all through my wrist. This isn't moving at all. And then I'm gonna lower it down slowly till the ball or the broomstick touches the floor. As soon as it touches, without resting, I'm gonna bring it back up like that. Now, if you want to get a little bit more range of motion at this bottom part, you know, do this standing up on a block or standing on a chair. You can probably get a little bit more range of motion. I'm doing it just on the ground. It's fine. I'm just letting the ball just barely touch the ground, and then I'm just using my wrist to bring the, to bring the stick up like that. Okay. So those are the additional exercises that you can do using nothing more than just a broomstick or a baseball bat. Or, uh, or a broomstick with some type of weight on the end. All right, so get working those forearm muscles. You're gonna notice, first off, you're gonna notice a lot less injuries in your wrist and your uh, elbows and your forearms. And also, you're just gonna notice your workouts are gonna go better because your forearm muscles are not gonna fatigue out as quickly. Hey, listen, when you have a chance, visit my website, www.okramedhealth.com. We have various fascia release instruments in stock, such as three different sizes and Tai Chi balls to perform fascia release. You know, our new massage gun, what we call our SRI 3.0, will be in stock on December 22nd. This thing is awesome. Don't get fooled by cheap imitations that you see on Amazon where the, um, the you, you charge it and the, the battery lasts for about 40 minutes or 35 minutes. This is a um, this SRI 3.0 has a battery that can hold a charge for up to 24 hours. There's nothing like that on the market. It has a pressure sensor to let you know if you're pushing in too hard into the tissue. This thing is an awesome gun. It's going to be in stock next week. If you're enjoying these videos, please subscribe to my channel, Okra Med Health on YouTube. Questions about exercises or injuries, just leave a comment in the comment section below. I do everything I can to get back to everybody. And don't forget, Okra Med Health is here to keep you fit forever.